Hello learners, welcome to Shareability Uganda, welcome to the online classroom and today in our soft study lesson we shall be looking at P4 social studies and uh, we shall be looking at uh, clouds, uh, we shall be looking at the different types of clouds, um, defining what clouds are, uh, practically clouds are those smoke-like substance, those smoke-like stuff that you see when you look in the sky during daytime. Uh, sometimes they appear as if they are moving and then sometimes they appear as if they are stationary. They appear in different colors, sometimes gray, sometimes they be clear white, and sometimes they appear blue, uh, or sometimes they appear yellowish. Uh, they, those are all different types of clouds and uh, clouds can be defined as a collection of dust, moisture and smoke that float in the sky. That is how specifically we can define clouds. Uh, we have various types of, of clouds like I mentioned earlier. Excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, we have nimbus clouds which are very dark and very low and sometimes are very heavy because they store rain they are the type of clouds that that provide or store our rain uh, during rain rain during the rain period or when it's about rain the nimbus clouds lower down uh, these other clouds go above the nimbus clouds giving way to the nimbus clouds to provide us with rain this is how the nimbus clouds look like and we have another type of clouds which you call the stratus clouds these are these are the type of clouds that bring dissolving drizzling or when it's about to rain seriously that first part of, of the rain when it's very small and uh, with the small droplets uh, what we call drizzling it is all caused by what we know as stratus clouds uh, then we have what we call the cumulus clouds, uh, which are very white, very clear white. They appear like cotton wool in the sky. They show fine weather when it's not too hot and when it's not too cold. When the weather is just 50-50, you understand? Those are types, that, sorry, the type of clouds that bring about that is called the cumulus clouds. Then we have what we call the cirrus clouds. These are very large and they move in the sky, bring about storms. So they are not experienced regularly uh, everywhere in every region. They are normally experienced in regions or skies of regions that normally experience storms. Uh, then lastly, we can look at what we call the chumlonimbus clouds. Chumlonimbus clouds are also very large and they have similar characteristics just like the previous clouds we have talked about uh, the the what the cyrus clouds they all have the same clouds it's on that the they these are very thick and uh, appear in different color they kind of look like yellowish uh, those are some of the types of the clouds we can look at at this stage uh, but we can still look at other elements of weather uh, we can look at air pressure which is also called as atmospheric pressure air pressure is measured in millibars so when you want to understand the amount of atmospheric pressure in a region or in a, in a certain area you you may need an instrument called a barometer and it will give you figures in units of millibars that is what we call atmospheric pressure. This is what we call the barometer, the instrument used to measure atmospheric pressure or air pressure. And then we have temperature, uh, which is the degree of hotness or coldness of an area or an object. Temperature is measured in degrees and uh, the instrument that helps us to measure the the degree of hotness or coldness of an area or an object is called a thermometer. We have various types of th thermometers. I made a video specifically about uh, specifically about temperature, and it has various types of 
uh, of uh, of thermometers you can check out that video it's titled temperature uh, it it talks about temperature how we can convert from celsius sorry from celsius scale to fahrenheit scale uh, various types of temperature sorry thermometers the clinical thermometers 60 thermometers etc etc so you, i advise that you check out that video uh, like i said we have various types of thermometers we have the clinical thermometers we have the what what thermometers but in this topic sorry in this lesson video today we shall be looking at the 60s thermometer or the maximum and minimum thermometer uh, this is a type of thermometer that is used to measure the maximum thermometer sorry the maximum temperature or high temperature and low temperature concurrently or at the same time uh, why do we specifically use mercury uh, but not porridge or not water uh, not soda in our thermometers it is because mercury and alcohol are liquids that that change easily with the change in temperature they react very quickly with a temp with even a small change in temperature but more specifically mercury does that mercury reacts very quickly with even a small change in temperature that's why it's normally used in in most thermometers uh, when i talk about in most in most, most thermometers i mean the analog thermometers leave alone these digital thermometers the ones that look like shotguns no 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 i'm talking about the analog thermometers so this is how a sixes thermometer looks like or a minimum and maximum thermometer this is how it looks like uh, like i said why mercury is most importantly used in mostly analog thermometers it does not stick on the walls of the thermometer it is very clear so readings can be easily taken without confusion it is more sensitive to heat than even alcohol like i said previously uh, scales used on thermometers i mean analog thermometers don't forget uh, we have the celsius scale and the fahrenheit scale those are the two basic scales used on analog thermometer the other element we can look at is a weather station what is a weather station uh, and if we can think about weather station a weather station is where weather conditions are studied and recorded sorry about that if you're taking notes this should be and not ed it is where it is where where weather conditions are studied and recorded then we have what we call a stevenson screen which is a wooden box in which delicate weather instruments are kept at a weather station uh, this is how his television screen looks like it is always painted white simply to reflect sunlight and to show how important the instruments inside it are uh, it is paint, painted white to reflect sun sun heat uh, it is lowered to the to allow air circulation within it that's why it is lower uh, below okay next to the ground and it has those louvers to allow air circulation into or inside the box its importance is to protect delicate weather instruments from damage for example the rain gauge the barometers um the hygrometers etc etc what are the instruments found in a stevenson screen those delicate instruments that we talk about that can be stored in the stevenson screen they include the barometer like i said the thermometer the hygrometer etc etc you can think of any delicate weather instrument that can be stored in a, or that can be used on a weather station those all those delicate weather instruments are always stored in a stevenson screen um how does weather affect human activities or how does a type of weather determine what activities can be done by humans in a given area uh, 
for example, we can take for example people who live in areas that receive reliable rains. What activities do you think they can do? Basically, they can grow crops, they can keep animals, unlike those in dry areas. Take for example people living around Mount Mountain Elgon. Uh, they receive uh, reliable rains throughout the year. So these people are capable of growing crops. They are capable of keeping animals. Uh, they, they are capable of doing a lot of activities, uh, agricultural activities, I mean, compared to people living in semi, se like semi, like, or oh, like dry areas, I mean, semi desert areas. Take, for example, people living in Karamoja. The land is very dry, it's infertile. There are some activities they, that they, they like some agricultural activities that cannot be performed in those areas and another example is people who live in dry areas wear light clothes while those who those who live in in cold areas wear heavy clothes like for example when you see people people who live around mount Mount, Mount Renzori, in those areas of Kasese, southwestern Uganda, uh, they always they are always clad on jackets, uh, coats, sweaters because the area is very cold throughout the day. The degrees are very low, temperatures are very low. That's why they are always in heavy, heavy clothing. Uh, Weather determines the types of crops to grow. Like, uh, like I gave an example of people living around Mount Elgon, uh, the type of weather they experience uh, enable them to grow certain types of crops like banana, uh, coffee, uh, but there are some certain types of crops they can't grow because of the type of weather they experience. For example, they, they cannot grow wheat simply because the weather does not support the growth of that type of crop. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for supporting Shareability. Uh, please consider giving us a like to boost or support the channel and also subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. May God bless you.